is another one of the Remembering Forgotten Memories series. Um, as you can guess by the title, it's a little bit clickbaity, but hang with me. Hang with me. Because yes, obviously, doing the math, it's not that John Lennon, because that John Lennon died in the end of 1980, and I wasn't born until January of 85, so obviously it's not that one, but again, hang with this story. So, <sighs> this story takes us back to, I want to say about 1999, maybe 2000, but I want to say 99, because I believe I was 14 when this went down, um, my first year of high school. And at that age, I was still very fond of prank calls. Like, really, really fond of it. Never mind that I was terrible at them, but very fond of them. Especially when I went over to my friend's house, like, pretty much every Monday, just about. Um, we would get bored and make prank calls when her mom wasn't home. So, um, on one evening, not over at her house, but just at home, back in the days of phone books being actual physical things. Um, yeah, I know. There's some subscribers on this channel who probably don't even remember that because they're so young. But yeah, they were a thing. Um, I was just flipping through it. I think it was like the summer I had no internet access because I got it taken away because I'm a dumb shit. But um, beside the point, I was just flipping through it and just kind of looking up random names, seeing what came up. And because I'm me, I looked up Beetle names, just to see, you know, just on that tiny little fraction of a chance. Found nothing for Ringo, obviously, although I looked up his real name, Richard Starkey, even though I know damn well none of the Beatles live in this area, but, um, beside the point, not to mention that one of them's also dead, but two of them now, but at that point, George was still alive. No Paul McCartney. There was a James McCartney, but, yeah, or actually, no, no. If there had been, I would have been calling him, too. It was McCarthy. But I think we still called him anyway, but... Um, there was a George Harrison, and there was a John Lennon that I found, and I got very, very excited, because I decided, in my 14-year-old wisdom, that this meant John Lennon was alive and well, and living in Newark, California, because I found him in the phone book, so obviously it must be true, right? Yeah, I know. It was around the age I had just discovered conspiracy theories, like the ones about Elvis being alive and well somewhere, and Jim Morrison being alive and well in France or some shit. You know the ones I'm talking about, where people have claimed to have spotted them in like a gas station in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So I decided that, well, this totally means John Lennon's alive and well, and this is all a conspiracy theory, so of course he'd pick somewhere really unexpected like Newark, California to go hide out. And because it's so unexpected, he'd even let his phone- or his name be put in the phone book because nobody's gonna even think of looking there for him. So I wrote down the phone number. I also wrote down the address because my cousin at that point lived in Newark, and I- in my creepy little creeper dumbness, decided I was going to send her out on a task. I was going to have her just, for shits and giggles, go look up this address and tell me, you know, if you happen to see a guy walking in and, or out of his house, d does he look like that John Lennon? Because, you know, that's his name. I is it him? Maybe? Like, try and imagine in your brain, age him up about 20 years, you know? Maybe? Uh, she never did actually see him, but she found the house. But that's beside the point. So... Phase two of this, I was too chicken shit to call the number on my own. So at my friend's house, I decided in the middle of one of our crank calling sessions, I remember that, oh shit, I have John Lennon's phone number. Let's call it. Okay, so we did. Although first we decided, what the hell would we even say to him? I mean, especially if he picks up. I mean, if he doesn't pick up, then no harm, no foul. But if he picks up, what the hell do we say? I don't know, maybe, like, aren't you supposed to be dead? And I was like, brilliant, we'll say that, because I don't know why. So I call the number, and the guy picks up the phone. I shit you not, he has a British accent, and I about shit my pants, panicked, and hung up that phone. Which is like, oh my god, oh my god, I think it's him, 
I like like for real. I thought I was kidding before making up a conspiracy theory, but I think it's like actually actually that John Lennon. No, it's not. No, for real. You call him. So she hit redial, and he answered again, and then she hung up because <laughs> she didn't know what to say either. <laughs> so we're just sitting there like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And it took us a few minutes to calm down. We decided to make some other crank calls, you know, to calm ourselves down, get back into the mind state of being able to do this. Like, an hour passed because we figured, you know, if we keep calling over and over and just hanging up, he's going to stop answering the phone. So we waited, like, at least an hour before we called back again. And this time, the phone was back to me because we were, like, handing off the phone back and forth to do crank calls. Like, she'd do one, I'd do it, she'd do one, I'd do one. Again, they were all very stupid. Well, my, mine were stupid. Hers were good. Mine always sucked, but, uh, <laughs> regardless. We get back to this. He picks up the phone again. And I make words happen. And I unfortunately say what she just jokingly said, and I didn't realize the sarcasm when she said it. And I was like, <laughs> is this John Lennon? Aren't, aren't you supposed to be dead? And she's just like smacking Marlo. You can't say that. He's gonna think that somebody's trying to kill him. And like yanked the phone out of my hand and hung up. I was just like, but you literally just told me to say that. To him. And she's just like, dude, he's gonna call the cops and they're gonna show up here looking for you if you say shit like that. So I was like, but that's literally. All right, fine, fine. Well, what else are we gonna say to him then? I don't know, but you can't say that to him. So I was like, well, damn. And, like, we tried to figure out what the hell should we even say to this guy, and we came up with nothing. So we just kind of abandoned this plan for the day. I don't think we even tried it again the next week. It was, like, the week after that. We decided to try again. And I forget what we even decided we'd say. This Maybe we just, like, winged it and decided, you know what? We're not even going to plan out what to say. We're just going to call him. So we did. This time he didn't pick up. His wife, or his girlfriend, or whoever, I assume wife, but maybe it's not wife, I don't know, picked up. This adds to my believing it's all a conspiracy theory that much more. Shit you not, she had a Japanese accent. I was like... Do, 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 do. And I, I again panicked, and I hung up. Which is like, are you shitting me right now? Not only is there a John Lennon in the phone book who lives like half an hour away, and he's British, but his wife is Japanese. Do you know what this means? <laughs> it means it's obviously really him. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. At 14, I was so, so stupid. <laughs> but, um, I believed it hook, line, and sinker at that point. Like, what started out as a joke led to my full-on fucking believing this is that John Lennon who is definitely alive and well. Yeah really fucking stupid of me, but <laughs> adding to this that much further, his exact name in the phone book was John M. Lennon. Flip an M what, upside down, what do you get? You get a W. So I figured, oh, oh, he just threw it out there as a red herring, but it's totally obviously him because all you have to do is flip the letter and oh my god, it's totally him. Yeah, I was a fucking spouse at 14. So this turned into a weekly fucking thing, and eventually got to where I was ballsy enough to just fucking call over there on my own time, from home too, and just would call at random fucking hours. Most of the times, I would get so nervous, I couldn't fucking speak, and would just hang up like a damn spaz. But the times I could speak, I, I would just act like a fucking fangirl, because I was now convinced it was John. And in hindsight, this had to be really fucking creepy, because I was just like, is, is this John Lennon? Oh my god, I'm such a huge fan of yours. Oh my god, are you and Paul ever getting back together? And this dude, like, I shit you not, played along with it. He was such a good sport. But it's just like, what the hell? What are the odds that his name would be that and he'd be British and he'd be married to an Asian woman? Like, really though? So, of course, for me, it was just, like, the biggest head trip of all time. And this went on for, like, a fucking year until he stopped answering the phone and it was just the woman answering the phone and he wouldn't come to the phone anymore. But for, like, a good year there, he totally played along. 
And he totally pretended to be that John Lennon. He just, he deserves a gold star in my book for putting up with my obsessive ass. Now, in the case of George Harrison, yeah, I called and I called and I called and got nowhere until late one night, an old lady picked up the phone and I asked if George Harrison was there. And she got very upset because that was her husband who had just died two weeks ago. I am a terrible person. <sighs> yeah, I left that phone number the fuck alone after that, but, um, yeah, I kept bothering with the John Lennon one for probably another six months before I bailed on that, but, yeah, <laughs> that was a thing that I used to do that he totally played along with. It was just such a good sport, and, you know, I kind of like to shake the dude's hand and just apologize for being a shithead, but... You know, that was many years ago. That was, like, over half a lifetime ago now, so... Yeah, I mean, if he even still remembers it, I'm sure he does not care at this point, but... What can you do? So, anyway. That was a throwback Thursday story for you all. I have been meaning to tell that story for freaking ages on here and just finally got around to doing it today, so you are welcome. As if anybody probably even watched this, but anyway. So, that is it for this one, so if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you're not already, you'd like to be, click subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an upload, leave comments down below, and if you like what I do here on this channel and you want to help support it, the donation link is down in the description box. Anyway, until next time, bye!